Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon, the greatest sports prophet on earth, Perna. When my cycle syncs with the NFL, I cannot be stopped. You already know, if you follow me on Twitter at Brandon Perna, that I predicted the Chiefs come back before they scored a single point. But more impressively, I predicted the guy who left the Chiefs game early on Twitter as well. I'm out of here. I'm out here so we get the second half comeback going. Hopefully. However, I respect the move, even from a Chiefs fan. But the dude should have owned that he knew he was the curse. Are you a Chiefs jinx? <laughs> I don't believe it, but today, some had to shake, man. I was like, you know what? I'm listening to y'all. I'm going to leave, and we're going to see what happens. What would you say to that fan? Uh, watch the next game at home. <laughs> <laughs> It was that funny. <laughs> now we have a lot to cover today. Oh, Julian Edelman was arrested over the weekend. The Browns will hire Kevin Stefanski as their next head coach. Tony Romo is going to get paid by ESPN. And Antonio Brown threw a bag of dicks at the mother of his children. And I want Marshawn Lynch as my next financial advisor. And first financial advisor. That's good, sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I do football videos here every day. Today's episode though is sponsored by ExpressVPN, which I am very, very excited about because your information security should be a priority. What is a VPN? It's a virtual private network that protects your personal information from being seen by virtual pirates. When you're connected to an unencrypted internet, your personal digital information is exposed to hackers. ExpressVPN, through encryption, essentially provides a digital cloak to protect what you don't want others to see. And personally, I've never felt better about my weird search history for jokes, for the jokes I write on this show, as I know ExpressVPN is protecting my data. Better yet, it gives you access to apps or websites that can be blocked based on your location. Think about a sports team blocked because of where you live. With ExpressVPN, you can reroute your connection to a different city or country to bypass those restrictions. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN free by clicking the link in the description or going to expressvpn.com slash that's good sports. All right, Marshawn Money Lynch gave the best retirement speech since the guys at the end of Cocoon. It's a vulnerable time for a lot of these young dudes, you feel me? They don't be taking care of their chicken right, you feel me? So if I had an opportunity to let these little uh, young sahibs know something, i say take care of y'all money, African, because that shit don't last forever. Now, I done been on the other side of a retirement, and it's good when you get over there and you can do what the fuck you want to. So I tell y'all right now while y'all in it, take care of y'all bread. So when y'all done, go ahead and take care of yourself. So while y'all at it right now, take care of y'all bodies. You know what I mean? Don't take care of y'all chicken. You feel me? Don't take care of y'all mentals. Cause look, we ain't lasting that long. Uh, After hearing that, I opened a Roth IRA account and invested all of the extra money I have in chicken stocks. Not on the stock market, of course, but in tens of thousands of cans of chicken stock. That money was supposed to pay for my penis surgery, but since that's entirely cosmetic, I figured it's better to invest at this time. Now TMZ reported that the police were called to Antonio Brown's Florida home, where in a fit of rage, AB threw a bag of dick-shaped gummies at the mother of his three children after she allegedly tried to steal one of his cars. Even though you can see the picture of the Bentley here on her Instagram, where it was clearly gifted to her back in 2018. Whilst throwing said dicks at the woman who bore his three children, he shouted, have a bag of dicks. It's the bag of dicks. Knowing this is another stain that will probably add to the case for never allowing Antonio Brown back into the NFL, AB responded by saying, fuck the NFL, this is real life. Nothing about your life, Antonio, is real. The worst part is AB live streamed this so we could see him acting like an out of control bag of dicks in front of his kids. You fucking white fish ball, get the f out of here, you bitch. Come on, Polo, the f out of here. Fucking police can't have now you a fucking 
Chaz Law. Get the f out of here, you fucking pussies. Fucking bitch. Get the f out of here. Get the f out of my property, you pussies. Antonio Brown, leading candidate for the world's worst dad live streamer. I can't even make fun of a bag of dicks because listening to Antonio Brown do that with his children right there makes me sick. Antonio Brown ruining a bag of dicks for me is the worst thing he's ever done. Make sure to tune in to AB's next live stream titled, How to Yell Profanities at Social Services. Now, Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman was arrested in Beverly Hills over the weekend after having absolutely no idea how to spend his time in the month of January. It's the first January Julian has been on his own in the wild since 2010. To be fair to Julian, you can get arrested for vandalism in Beverly Hills if you audibly fart in one of their vegan Gucci pet slash coffee shops. Edelman was arrested and cited for misdemeanor vandalism and then released after jumping on the hood of someone's Mercedes. The police said the case will likely be dropped if the owner of the car just lets Julian pay for the damages. And since it was a lowly C-class sedan, Edelman probably has that money just lying around in cash. Personally, I hope the guy that owns that Mercedes is a Jets, Bills, Dolphins, or Falcons fan. I'd say Rams, but <laughs> those are still hard to find even in LA. Now, police also stated that they let Edelman go because he is, quote, extremely white, and we can't wait to see him get a head coaching job one day. Now the Browns apparently are ready to hire Vikings offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski and requested permission to interview the Vikings assistant GM George Patton for the GM job, which means they were smart enough to not hire Josh McDaniels, but dumb enough to let McDaniels stay in New England. If the Browns were smart, if they were thinking, they would have hired Josh McDaniels, waited for Belichick to replace him, and then rescinded the McDaniels offer. That's GMing on the next level. And I don't know what the Browns' fascination is with the Vikings. Maybe they love the way the Vikings can lose in the playoffs. Making their OC their head coach and then targeting uh, one of the Vikings' in-house uh, front office dudes to be their GM. Which I guess if you need the GM and the coach to have a good relationship, that might be a smart move. The big question, is Kevin Stefanski a good hire? I think for what the Browns offense needs, he's actually a great fit if he can handle the task of head coaching and calling plays on Sunday. He's inheriting a great running back. Well, two, really. Uh, can Baker Mayfield run the boot? Yep. Two extremely talented wide receivers? Check. One underused tight end? Check. All the pieces are there for Stefanski to succeed. Now, Stefanski and Gary Kubiak came together, as two men do from time to time, and molded bodies and offensive minds into one newish system, which is ripe for a big improvement for the Browns. Stefanski is going to ask Baker Mayfield to do less and open up easy plays for him, just like he did for Kirk Cousins. Whether he has success depends on if the Browns stick with him. Sure, Robert Salah's defense played better, much better than the Vikings offense this last weekend. And I do think Salah Salah is a good defensive coordinator. However, his defense is stacked with talent. All first round draft picks on that defensive front. It's hard to determine how much of that is on him. Either way, between Robert Salah and Kevin Stefanski, the Browns narrowed their coaching search down to the two best looking coaches available. And I respect that. Richard Sherman, who is perpetually angry about everything, was not a fan of the Kevin Stefanski hiring. Eric Weddle and Danny Woodhead LOL'd Sherman's tweet. Sherman wouldn't know a good thing if it bit him in the ass and then kissed him on the mouth French style. Keeping Sala is a huge win for the 49ers now and next season. The team is poised to go on a run. So be grateful that magic will be intact for another year, Richard. Jesus fuck, man, stop acting like the world hates you. Now the Jaguars have fired their offensive coordinator, John DeFilippo. That was a hiring that never made sense to me. DeFilippo got labeled as this rising offensive genius when he was the quarterback's coach in Philly. 
That's where he reaped the benefits of being on the same coaching offensive coaching staff as Frank Reich and Doug Peterson. He then got the OC job in Minnesota and was terrible. They fired him in December before the season even ended, which should have been the biggest sign that Jacksonville shouldn't fucking touch him. But he succeeded with Nick Foles in Philly by, you know, being on the sideline while Doug Peterson and or Frank Reich were calling the offensive plays. Which is why with Kevin Stefanski going to Cleveland, DiFilippo has the chance to OC for a team where he can't butcher the offense by calling plays. Kevin can make Cleveland great again and DiFilippo can get a head coaching job in two years where he can hire an OC to do the one thing he can't do, run an offense. But with his ties to Minnesota, he's, just, he's a lock in Cleveland. Now you know it's been a while and maybe it's because I've detached myself from reality and just tried to focus on the great football that happened throughout December and all of those glorious Patriots losses. But the NFL hasn't pissed me off for a while. That was until Pro Football Talk posted this article about Bill's right tackle, Cody Ford, getting fined $28,075 for this hit, for this block where he blocked a guy looking right into his eyes, but Jadavian Clowney's hit on Carson Wentz not only wasn't flagged, it was held up and not fined by the league. The officials, I won't blame them for flagging Ford because based on the idiotic rule, it's technically a flag, making it just the ninth dumbest rule in the name of safety the NFL has installed to the game. But looking back at this and thinking somehow this play jeopardizes the safety of Jacob Martin to the extent that the league needs to rob Cody Ford of nearly 30 Gs is fucking stupid. Not since Roger Goodell's parents have I seen people so unwilling to admit they made a mistake. Fines are supposed to punish players who exhibit malicious intent on the field or wear the wrong colored socks. In no way was what Ford did malicious. He was just trying to play football. Clowny, you can debate. And as bad as that looks, I don't think that shit should be fined either. Again, you can have a different opinion, Eagles fans, I get that. But what we can't have is an NFL that says this is worse than this. Get your shit together. Now Josh McCown tore his hamstring off the bone in that Eagles uh, Seahawks game last two weekends ago. He played through having no working hamstring in one leg. That is incredible, which is why I have to honor him with the Iron Cock Award. Take care of y'all chicken. But if you're a quarterback and you care at all about your health, do not sign a contract with the Eagles. Now, Tony Romo is on track to become the highest paid football game talker in sports history. ESPN is reportedly offering Tony Romo 10 to 14 million per year on a seven year deal to rid the world of Joe Tessitore and Booger McFarland. A great move for ESPN if they want quality broadcasting on Monday Night Football in 2020. But a terrible move for Twitter and the internet and people like me who loved featuring Booger's on-screen dicks every week. These two guys are coming. They're both gonna come inside. CBS does have the right to match any offer ESPN makes Romo. So there's no guarantee Monday Night Football won't be like listening to the football version of Maroon 5 every week. But we will be lucky to get Romo on Mondays if it happens, especially if he keeps responding like this when Jim Nance brings up the anniversary of the Des Bryant catch not catch. To which Romo said, that's a great memory, Jim. Let's go to break so I can be very upset. See you when we get back. And I will see you guys when I get back, which will be later tonight or tomorrow morning. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Did you sub on YouTube? Did you like the video? Maybe you did until I started talking like this. Mm -hmm.